Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 13, Romans chapter 3 verse 9, and Luke chapter 7 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for all you've done for our lives. God, thank you for your blood. Lord Jesus, it covers us. It covers a multitude of sin. Lord God, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 13. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. All right. And so this was basically talking about um, like the dietary restrictions of some people who felt that, you know, you shouldn't eat meat if you um, believed in and just issues that, you know, of uh, that were stumbling blocks for some people. Some people were really caught up in that. And we know, you know, some people like that, where it's just that you're immature in your faith still. And so you can only see things in a certain way. And so, um, whereas, um, uh, I want to say it was Peter who had had the vision that um, don't call unclean what I have called what I've what I've called clean. And so remember, he saw the sheet coming from heaven and the animals on it. So they were able to eat of those animals and things. And so um, there it was they were free because of Jesus. Right. But of course, there were some people who were still stuck into many um, Hebrew traditions of the old covenant and they they were hung up on them right but these weren't issues of belief right the i mean they were issues of faith but they weren't issues of believing on christ as our savior and so this was something that people um were falling away from god over from christ right and falling into old traditional ways of the law and so it was basically stated that, you know, if this is such a thing as a stumbling block um, and you know that this little issue is going to cause your brother to fall in where in where they are and growing in to know the fullness of Christ, then you shouldn't eat meat in front of them. Right. Because, you know, that this is going to be a stumbling block in front of them. And so. Um, you you shouldn't change your beliefs, but you should make sure that while you're around them, you walk gently, right? And so that we we deal with this every day in life, right? If somebody um is a um a, a a drinker, right? And so um if you go around that person and you don't have a problem drinking wine or something, whatever you drink, and then you're a believer and you go around this person who you know they stumble, you know that they fall, you have to walk gently around them. You wouldn't want to go to their house and bring a keg. Right? Well, I'm just saying that's not that's not my point. But my point is you wouldn't want to come to their house and and commune in that way, right? You wouldn't want want to bring bottles of wine to them. You wouldn't want to do things that cause them to stumble. If you are a person who knows the pastor just got done talking about gossiping, right? And you're, you know, this person has a problem with gossiping. You wouldn't want to pick up the phone and call them to talk to them about something that you heard that happened, right? Because you're, so, and you know that maybe you can be displaced about a, a situation and, and maybe you need counsel about it but you you know that that person gossips right and they they're going to turn it into something else you don't want to consult that person that person will stumble right and so you have to be careful with the way you carry yourself as a believer especially trying to be an example to any other believer right you now you're not the exception to sin Right. So if, if if something that you have going on is turning into sin and you know that God is convicting you, that's a whole nother issue. But if you know that a person has a problem 
you should not um, go around them and cause them to stumble because of the way that you are acting, because of the things that you're holding back from or not holding back from, right? And so we need to be, the way we do this is we're just sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Um, Holy Spirit may give you some sort of unction, a conviction, um, something that lets you know, hey, this is an area, right, of attention. So listen to me as we walk, right? Sometimes God doesn't give you very many directions. Sometimes he'll just give you a very faint and, and a vague, um, slight push in a direction. And you have to just realize, okay, this is an area of contention and I have to seek God about my every step, right? I, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't go over there and do this or do that, right? So you, we have to be sensitive um, to the Holy Spirit as it relates to the stumbling of our brethren. All right. And so Romans chapter three, verse nine, what then are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all both Jew and Greek are under sin. So the issue is not um, class of persons. The issue is saved and unsaved right? It, it, do you believe on Jesus, right? Do you, there's no better or, or worse or higher or lower as it relates to belief and unbelief, right? Someone is saved or someone is not saved, right? Um, God does the deliverance in different orders, right? So sometimes people are instantaneously delivered from all sorts of things, right? Even religiosity, right? And and oh, so many rules and all these things. Uh, these are all things. Some people are just instantaneously delivered and some people, you know, take the rest of their run with Christ to be delivered. But either way, there is no greater or lesser than God is not partial like man is right. God does not say, oh, this one's better. I like this one better. Right. No, he he is not a God like that. They're, the Jews are not better off than the Gentiles, right? The Because it's an issue of belief or unbelief, right? If the Jew does not believe on the Christ that was sent for them, that was prophesied through their apostles and prophets, um, then they didn't believe and they won't come under that blood covering. Um, they won't be a part of the remnant that believe. And so same thing with the Gentiles. If they don't believe on the Christ, then they're in the same class as, as the person person who um, just did not believe or an unbelieving Jew. It, there is no greater or lesser. It's belief and unbelief, right? And so if you know that there is a believer who is having issues, it's not an issue of salvation. It's an issue of a stumbling block. And you don't want to be the person that places the stumbling block there because you may be liberal in an area um, that you know God has shown you something, but it hasn't necessarily been revealed to that person. And so um, in, in, in that's even sharing, you know, the things that have happened to you or in your testimony, right? It is good to tell a testimony, but you have to make sure you are listening for Holy Spirit so that he He leads and guides and directs you and, and you don't over tell things that people aren't ready for. We all have to be sensitive to that. And so it says, therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat lest I make my brother stumble. Our cause should be greater in that hey, I don't want to do anything that causes you to fall away in unbelief. I don't want to do anything that makes you um, into that category, right? Um, I want to help you grow in your faith. We are there to encourage one another, build one another up and help one another. We all have need to receive from this and be sensitive to this. You know, this is not a, oh, only some people deal with issues like this. No, we all as believers deal with issues like this um, and, and we all need to be more sensitive. All right. It says, and what then are we Jews any better off? Not at all. For we have already charged that both Jew and Jews and Greeks are under sin. 
All right. And so let's look at the third verse to, to show us another aspect of this. Luke chapter seven, verse 12. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. All right. And so um, the thing I felt like Holy Spirit was saying about this is that we are near to the gate, right? Christ is near to the gate. This was in an area outside of the gate of a town and Christ was coming into the gate and he was um, about to enter and these people were coming out of the gate, right? So this is a transition point. And that's where we are right now as believers. We are in transition points. We are being delivered out of something. We are being set free out of something. We are living for Christ. We are running for Christ and we are getting ready for the kingdom, right? And even as we are transitioning in the gate, God is working miracles. It doesn't matter how how long you've been a believer. It doesn't matter if you just became a believer, right? It, the issue is belief and unbelief. Do you believe, right? So this, um, this, this woman was sorely depressed, right? Just imagine this was her only son. This was the only child that she had. Well, this says only son. So that's the ability to carry the name on, right? If you are a, um, a Jewish person, it is very important that you have um, a son because that son um, carries the name and with that name comes the land inheritance. And so for her, this was the loss of hope, income, um, of her future, right? Her husband was already dead and this was her only son. And so if she had a bunch of daughters, it, you know, that she would have to be struggling, right? Because she was now going to be a widow who didn't have that hope towards the future. And so this was a really depressing and sad scene. And so as they were coming out of the gate, um, Jesus was about to come into the gate, right? So they were taking this dead body um, outside of the gate. This was not Lazarus, right? This was not that. And Jesus healed this man. He he woke this man up and presented him to his mother, right? So it doesn't matter how late in the game this is. We don't know how long this man had been sick. We don't know what the circumstances were. But all we know is the man was dead. The situation was dead. God can still send deliverance. God can send deliverance to that believer that may um, look at your situation and find a, a stumbling block that there is still hope for them, right? It, there is always still hope. Why? Because Christ is a miracle working God, right? Christ is, is a God who can send deliverance to them. He can send, send his redemptive power. He can overnight deliver them from that thing that you didn't think was a, a thing that they could ever be delivered from. And so we need to make sure we're not the stumbling block. We're not sending them back into unbelief. We're not the problem. Right. But we need to just stand and believe and hope, knowing that we live in this transition point right now and that God is still a God of miracles, even in the gate, even in the transition point. God does not classify any of us as greater or lesser. Right. He he considers us his sons, his children. So you are either in belief or you are in unbelief. Right. So know that deliverance can come to people even in this gate, even as the 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 evening draws nigh, right? The sun is going down in this world. God can still work a miracle in the gate. Amen. So don't be a part of the stumbling block. You you pray for that person, you believe for that person and realize it's an issue of belief and unbelief, self saved or unsaved. Don't worry about all the things that are in between. God can still send to deliverance um, before we enter into this kingdom. He can do anything. Just stand firm in faith. There are miracles in the gate. Amen. All right.
right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for helping us to realize it's never too late. Lord God, it's never too late with you. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. Forgive us for all of our sins. Cover us with your blood. Help us to stand firm in faith. Help us not to pluck the splinter out of others' eyes when we have a plank in our own. Lord Jesus, forgive us for our sins. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.